Joining me now is Dr. Rob Linstead. Dr. Rob, welcome back to the broadcast. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure to be with you tonight. What are your thoughts on what I just presented? Well, you know, the contrast of, of Jonah and Nahum is interesting because in one case we have a, a disobedient prophet, that's Jonah, and yet the, the Word of God was so powerful that this heathen country, Nineveh, they repented. And then you come, like you say, uh, almost exactly 150 years later, and here's an obedient prophet, Nahum, and he comes, and now it's to a, a disobedient nation. And uh, I, I look at that contrast, but isn't it amazing that, that the revival that took place under Jonah in 150 years was lost? Uh, they, these people were, were at such a state that, that God deserved to judge them. I look at our country and think of how we were founded on principles of God, how we had godly men, godly families, godly examples, and, and we honored God with what we did. And now 150 years later, almost 150 years later, look at our nation. And we've, we're so far from God. We, we've made God in our own image. And it's a sad day because you know what? I believe that we deserve the judgment of God because really I see so many of our leaders, whether it's on a local level or a national level, that I think are, are indeed demon-inspired, demon-impressed. In, uh, and I, I'm, I'm concerned for our country. And so that's why I think we have to appeal to individuals. There, there are still some individuals who want to get a right relationship with God. Yeah. Well, we can pray to that end, can't we? Amen. Yeah. Well, of course, one of the things we know is that there's going to be a demonically inspired one world religious system. Today over at Bible Tip Now, BibleTIPNow.org, which is Rob's website, we go there, we see this new article he just put up. The Abrahamic family house in Abu Dhabi opens one world religion. Uh, let's show that on the screen there, guys. If you go to BibleTipNow.org, you'll find it. And uh, let's talk about this article. You know, it's, it's almost uh, ironic that the Bible talks about how that, that you'll know the, the last days. And, and like you say, there's going to be a, a one world ruler. He's going to be called the Antichrist. There, there's going to be a, a one world government. And uh, there's going to be a, a one world religious system. And the Bible is also clear that that religious system is going to be one that's devoid of God. I, I look at what's taking place and... Uh, that's why, really, I'm not a religious person. I'm a Christian, but I'm not a religious person. Religious people crucified Jesus because religion is about rules. Religion is about, about uh, you know, how you can uh, go through a, a form but never have your heart right. And, and that's what the Pharisees and Sadducees specialize in. And I think today we're looking at people, and, and so the real truth is, their religion makes them feel good, but the point of, of of Christianity is relationship. What God wants is a relationship. Even in the garden, he wanted a relationship with Adam and Eve, and sin broke that relationship. And so now for the next 6,000 years, God has been, been seeking to reestablish a relationship with mankind. And it was so much a desire of his that he sent Christ, Jesus Christ, as a man, to, to be crucified so that we could have that relationship back with God. And yet today, we, we see that God is almost mocked. God is mocked when we see these, these religious people coming together. There's no thought of God. They, they mention God, but, but they're violating so many things in Scripture. There's nothing doctrinal. What, what common ground do these people have? It's nothing doctrinal. And so they talk about how great it is because... They're going to have peace. It shows how people that, that disagree can get along. It, but see, it's got nothing to do with God. And that's that's what the Bible say would be in the last days. It's a form of godliness, but God is devoid of it. I really think that this is the, the ultimate smell, the obnoxious smell to God. Remember in the Old Testament, he said sometimes that there was a, that he detested the smell of the sacrifices because they were done without the right motive. They were done in the wrong way. I, I look at this, What? how obnoxious this has to be to God. Wow. So they're opening this up. Here's a picture again of it. You want to show it? We're going to have a, they're going to have a, 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 a Jewish temple. 
an Islamic mosque and a so-called Protestant church, correct? Yeah, Catholic church. Catholic church. Mm -hmm. So so what do you think will be going on on this piece well, of property? I, I think what they're going to do is they're going to say, okay, this is a way to, uh, uh, they're, they're going to talk lightly about sin. Uh, they're going to say that everybody's welcome. So it doesn't matter if you're homosexual, if you're bisexual, if you're whatever, whatever brand you are. They're going to say that doesn't matter. And, uh, and yet the Bible is very clear that God does have a standard. Romans chapter 1 gives a standard for the New Testament. And I think what they're going to do is they're going to elevate the creation above the creator. Uh, we know that they're, matter of fact, they're already trying to do that. And uh, so each of them are going to try to, to outpiece one another. And uh, there, there's going to be very little of God's word. I look at the, in, in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, they talk about seven churches. There's, there were more than seven churches at that time, but there were seven that represented I'm going to say Christianity in the in the church world, and, and it's progressive. In other words, the first of the church age was like the church at Ephesus. They were doctrinally straight. They they did those things that that please God, but then their love, their relationship, and their love began to to wane, and and they drifted from God, and we see a downward spiral until you get to the seventh church, the church at Laodicea. And that church is so far removed from God, they talk about how that they're rich, but really in God's eyes, they are poor spiritually. How they, uh, they, they brag because they had a, a salve that you could put on your eye. And it turns out that now we know that, that probably that salve spread blindness, not held blindness. And they had a fashion show. They, they, took, uh, they, they were proud of their fashions. They, they took wool that was inferior. They would dye it black. They, would, they set the, the trend of the day. In other words, Everything they had was a facade. That's what I'm seeing today in churches. It's a facade. It has to do with an offering. It has to do with how big is our building. It has to do with, with what we can brag. And, and uh, we, we go to God in such a casual way. This, this is the holy God of the universe. This is the creator of, of all the universe. This is the one who's offended by one sin. And we approach him like we're playing marbles in the, in the sand yard. And, and it doesn't matter what we do. No, no, it does matter what we do. And I think there's going to come a time, based on what the Bible says, that God's going to say, they're so far from me that I have to judge them because his standard is holiness. I can't achieve that standard. Uh, but Jesus Christ is that standard. And so that's why what pleases God is that we come to him in faith, admit our shortcomings, our sin, and we accept the holy standard of God, and we do that by accepting Jesus Christ as a substitute. There's not going to be any of that. These, every one of these systems have a works mentality. We, we work to please God. We, we can't work enough to please God. And so we're offending God, and, and sooner or later he's going to be sick of it, and he's going to judge the world, and you know what? We're going to have to say, he deserves to judge the world. Look how God is mocked. It's mocked in our movies. It's mocked in our books. The, the whole idea that, that we're a, a Christian nation is almost a joke. I, I fear for America. I fear for young people because some of these young people don't understand the beauty and the holiness of God. To be holy like God is something that's so beautiful that we can't even we can't even stand to see God how holy he is. Moses couldn't see the face of God. That's how holy God was. We're missing out on what could be the biggest blessing, and instead we're going to get the judgment of God. Mm. And look in this article it says that that the Pope went to the United Arab Emirates, the first papal visit to the Ibrian Gulf, Arabian Gulf. He and the Sheikh signed a document. A document of human fraternity for world peace and living together. Uh, affirmation of shared values and solidarity against extremism. What do you think the extremism was, Dr. Lindstead? Well, I, I think extremism is that they're, they're going to end up saying, okay, don't judge people for their, their sexual lifestyle. Uh, you know, we, we saw that. We Which saw is that kind of ironic, though, coming out of, uh, out of the United Arab Emirates because I guess they're more, they're more moderate, uh, trying to appear more moderate. But 
that this is still uh, is, uh, <laughs> homosexuality is still a problem with most Muslims, even though even though in their twisted, weird world, a lot of Muslim men fool around with little boys. I don't know if most people realize that. They should because it does happen. And uh, but but look at the immorality, the homosexuality that that's in in the Catholic Church. Look at it in in every walk of life. And so what we're doing is we're we're backing away from that and. Uh, when I say we're backing away from that, I'm, I'm talking about religion today. You see, it's reduced to a religion. And instead of saying, what's the standard? We're saying, what's the easy way out? And so what I see is that these people are uniting. How can they unite? If they really, even if they believe what they said they believe, then they would offend each other. I'm not saying be mean to people, but I'm saying, there's there's standards that you have there's doctrine that you have doctrine is important and and so what this is saying is what you believe is not important it is important matter of fact it's the difference between heaven and hell what you believe god did not send his son to die to say that that it's not important it's very important and so so when you see these seven churches mentioned in revelation wow god is offended by them and they're judged and every time they were judged when they did something incorrect wrong and the church that later see it it was so bad that it says this that god spewed them god vomited them out of his mouth. can you imagine god sick of his stomach well i look around at what's taking place in the religious world and it's got to be sickening to god and i think god will come and he'll judge there comes a time when he says there's going to be no more repentance and that's why I fear for America. I fear for the world because we're people that have lost sight of the fact that God is holy and that, and that holiness is not something that's awful. Holiness is something that's, that's wonderful. It's beautiful. And when we see a holy God someday, we're going to say, wow, why in the world did we conform our standards to his standards so that we could enjoy this relationship that he wants? But wow, we've, we've taken a big step in the wrong direction. And I really believe that we're coming to a place where God's going to say, I've got to judge the world because there's not going to be a way for it to repent. Look at the flood. You know, why, why did God judge people then? Well, it was evil continually. Every imagination of the mind was evil continually. In other words, there was one family that was righteous. And that was righteous because they, they believed God. I think that that even in terms of their biology, they were, they were righteous. They, they obeyed the standards of God. There was not the mutilation that they had with, with uh, the sexual things. And so God said, there's nothing more that can happen. I, I can't continue. I think he looks at us. Let me tell you, our children are being so perverted that it's amazing that they don't even understand what's the standard of right. What's the standard of wrong? And, and we don't vote on it. We, we take one who's the creator. He's the one that established right and wrong. And, and religion has modified it. And so I say, what commonality is there between Islam and, uh, and Judaism? How can you find a common ground? Yeah. They're totally different. Absolutely. And, uh, and so they're forcing us to say, and so when we don't do this, when, when when I say I'm not excited about this, people think, wow, you're, you're so intolerant. Yeah, I can only be as tolerant as the Bible allows me to be. Wow, good line. Let me ask you about this one story before we let you go. U.S. quietly shipping ammo to Ukraine for massive stockpile in Israel. It does seem as though the United States is trying to put Israel right in the middle of this mess. The Secretary of State Blinken last week was talking about uh, how Israel needed to work with Ukraine and help Ukraine. It seems like they're really working hard. Uh, the anti-Semites in the White House are working really hard to try to put Israel right in between Russia and Ukraine so that Russia turns on Israel. What say you? Yeah, th this is this is really a, a very interesting point because you see, there was a stockpile of, of weapons and ammunition in the Middle East to preserve peace there. We know that that's a, a focal point of the world. We know that's a hot spot in the world. And so I don't think it's a surprise to anyone that there's there was uh, missiles and, and equipment there. So now what has taken place, that equipment is being shipped 
from the Middle East, from Israel to the Ukraine. And so here's the point. Now the United States is involved. We're involved because we're financing the war. We're involved because it's now our equipment. Uh, we might as well be fighting the, the war because we're, we're supplying everything for the war. I saw today that finally the, the president of, of uh, Ukraine met with the, the, the Russian visitor that, uh, or with the uh, Israeli visitor that he had. Uh, these are being forced together. And so what it's going to do, it's going to drive the wedge even deeper between Russia and Israel. There, there's a hatred there already, but it's becoming even greater. Here's my fear. The president of the Ukraine is no better than the president of Russia. Okay, Did, If you take a look at his office, he lives like a king. I wonder where he got that the, the funding for that. He got it from the United States. He got it from, from these other things. I, I heard for the people of Russia. I heard for the people of Ukraine. But the leaders are godless leaders, and they only care about about feathering their own pockets. It's almost like the leaders of America. Sometimes I wonder, what what's the real concern? When was the last time you saw a, a leader in America that would give himself, devote himself? I remember the old stories about when when someone made bad change. I think it was Abraham Lincoln. He walked miles to give him a few cents change. <laughs> now we have leaders, and, and all they see is a way to make a profit off of, of people. Uh, the, the thing in the Ohio, it's embarrassing. Can you imagine? How do we talk to people in another country? We don't even care about our own citizens. That's right. That have a, a cloud of doom on them. Uh, things are so backwards in our country. And it's something too. You have that that Mike Dewine. What a little what a little sissy, Mike Dewine. Uh, he was out there pushing the shot, you know, giving away gifts for people to get shots. And they had a lottery. You could sign up for it, maybe win a million dollars or something. Uh, he was pushing that COVID death shot poison. Uh, and you know, this is gonna, you gotta have this, you gotta have the shot. We gotta protect everybody from the COVID. And then of course he turns around and, and <laughs> works with that railroad company to do a controlled burn and release these poisons all in the air. Worried, worried and freaking out over a so-called little virus while he literally poisons people. I mean, little, little Mike De DeWine, what a piece of human trash. Yeah, well, the, these people have no conscience. All no. that matters, it, all that matters is that they get rich. Here's, but here's the thing: they can only get rich for this lifetime, and and so they they made a bad trade. To be honest, they made a bad trade because you know what? They're not going to live longer than a hundred years or two hundred years. And, but but that's why you know what? We we got to do what's right, and what's right is to say let's go back to the standards that God has established. And then God has promised he'll bless us with those standards. I don't blame God for judging America. I, to be honest, I'm almost embarrassed that, we, that we've come to a place where, where God is used more as a cuss word than he is as a word of praise. And, and that's where we are in America. God will have to judge us. And I think this, this religion of bringing people together, there's no doctrine. There's no belief system. All it is is let's feel good about it. Let's make peace. Let's let's smooth things over. Wow, we're let's build, let's build a let's build a utopia on Earth, which you and I both know is going to be the kingdom of Antichrist. That's what they're building. Yep. They're going to use religion to get it done. Bible tip now. Bible tip now. Dot org. Thank you as always, Doctor Rob. Thank you. Bible. With you. you too. Check out his website, folks. Bible tip now. Dot org. Bible tip now. Dot org. Before we run off, take a look at this. We are sending so much emergency freeze-dried food out the door. I talked to uh, the company today we get it from, the, the manufacturer. I said, are your sales brisk? They said, yeah, ever since the uh, CCP balloon showed up in the air, the sales took off again. I said, you know what's really sad to me is it takes some kind of event to get people to get up and go do something. That, you know, let me just say you something, folks. Stop watching the news and waiting for the news to make you get motivated. I know that's nothing wrong with being motivated, maybe if that's what it takes, but we all ought to know enough now about our leaders and how corrupt they are that you shouldn't have to need a CCP balloon flying over your town to get it done. Look at this article I, I saw today. It's at worldviewreport.com. No vaccine, no food. Grocery industry merging with big tech and big pharma as new app tracks drug and vaccine purchases along with food. You know where that's going? You don't have your app updated with your latest COVID shot or the next COVID passport or 
vaccine passport. You're not getting into the grocery store, apparently. So let's go back here. You don't need a big event to happen. The big event might happen. It's going to be too late. We got free freight February right now. Free freight. For some of you, that's going to save hundreds of dollars. It's at www.tvstore.com. We're offering you a service, and it's a big part of our general operating budget as well. We got a breakfast kit, ready hour mega protein, fruit and veggie snack. We've got uh, gluten free, one year, two year. You can order online at wvwtvstore.com or you can call that number, 901 468 9357. Take advantage of free freight February at wvwtvstore.com. Take care.